This is an explanation for how to determine the rate law for a reaction with two reagents using the Van Hoff or initial rates method. I'm following here, I'm going to try to solve uh, example 6.1 in the book or a special problem uh, 3. All right, so the idea is that we have an enzyme substrate reaction like this. Okay. Uh, in this particular case, the enzyme is going to be hexokinase and the substrate is going to be glucose. And the idea is that we have to determine here what the rate law for this reaction is. Well, uh, the rate law, uh, when using initial rates, is just going to be uh, the initial rate is equal to uh, the rate constant times the concentration of enzyme to a power that we don't know, and the concentration of substrate to a power that we don't know. All right, so we actually have three unknowns uh, in this expression. We don't know what uh, the order with respect to the enzyme is, what the order with respect to substrate is, and we don't know what the rate constant is. And then we're going to try to uh, do some measurements to be able to determine those three uh, variables. The idea then is that uh, you're going to be measuring the rate for various concentrations of enzyme and substrate to see uh, how those concentrations affect uh, the rate and be able to determine those uh, quantities. Right, so the, the experiments are actually three sets of experiments. In the first one, we take a concentration of enzyme uh, equal to 1.34 uh, uh, millimolar. Uh, all of the concentrations are in millimolar. And we vary the concentration of substrate, uh, and we start with 1 uh, millimolar, then 1.54, then we do uh, 3.12, and then we do 4.02. We go to the laboratory and again measure the rate, uh, this value, as a function of the concentration of enzyme and substrate. And we get here four measurements of the rate. Right, so the question is, well, how can we uh, use this data to determine uh, uh, some of the unknowns that we have in, the ex in this expression? Notice that we actually ha what we have done in this particular experiment is to isolate the dependence of the uh, rate on the concentration of substrate because we're keeping the concentration of enzyme uh, frozen or constant. Under those conditions, what you actually have is that this value is constant, right? In those uh, four experiments, we haven't changed the concentration of enzyme and the order of uh, with the state where enzyme doesn't change. Okay, so this is actually a constant, and you can re uh, write this expression simply as this. K prime times the concentration of S to the M. All right, and again, notice that uh, this K prime is simply going to be equal to the rate constant you had initially times the concentration of enzyme at time uh, zero, time uh, elevated to the power of the order. All right, so using this expression, uh, now we're gonna be able to determine both M and K prime if we are able to turn this into a linear plot. And that is what the Van Hoff method really is. Taking the based and logarithm of this expression, you can come up with uh, an equation that uh, looks like this. Log of the rate is equal to log of K prime plus M times log of the concentration of substrate. All right, and this uh, sets you up uh, to be able to do a linear plot if uh, noticing that, well, you can put this in the y-axis, you can put this in the x-axis, and then you're gonna have here your intercept, and this is going to be your slope. All right, so the idea here is that uh, we take this data that we have right here, uh, but instead of just plotting the rate, we plot the logarithm of the rate, and instead of plotting the concentration of substrate, you take the uh, you plot the base stem logarithm of the concentration of substrate. According to this expression, that should give you uh, a straight line. Okay, so you have four data points. Uh, you have those four data points. I plot them like this: one, two, three, and four. And you can fit this uh, with some software and then you can obtain the equation of that fit that then you can use to relate, uh, to obtain uh, K prime and M. Okay, so uh, you can do this with Excel, or I've done it myself, and uh, I tell you in the statement of uh, special problem three that the equation of this fit is equal to uh, 3.69 plus 0.999x. Okay, that's the, the, the equation of that fit of this first set of experiments. What that tells you automatically is that, well, by comparison of this expression to that expression, you have that the slope of the line, uh, uh, this 0 0.999, is actually M, which is the order of the reaction with respect to substrate. Okay, so that's, uh, you already know one thing, and that is what the order of the reaction is 
with respect to substrate. This is the intercept, this number right here. And that what we have right here is logarithm of k prime. All right, a problem here is that k prime actually contains two unknowns. You don't know what k is, and you don't know what n is. Right, so you only have one value to determine two unknowns. That means that you cannot uh, solve for uh, the rate constant on n just using this simple uh, number. You're going to have to do more experiments to figure out what this value of n and k is. All right, so a way to do this would be to say, well, uh, I'm going to do the isolation method, but instead of just freezing the enzyme and then changing the substrate, you could just change a concentration of substrate and then vary the enzyme. And in a, in a way analogous to what we have done, you could in principle obtain both uh, uh, the reaction order with respect to the enzyme and rate constant. The book does something uh, a little different, uh, but in the end it actually uh, happens to work out just fine. And what the book does is just repeats these set of experiments but changing the uh, concentration of enzymes. So we increase the concentration of enzyme from 134 millimolar to 3 millimolar, and we just repeat these four measurements of the rate with the same concentrations, okay? So these are going to be different values. And then we repeat exactly the same thing. For these four uh, set of experiments, it turns out that the concentration of enzyme is the same, right? So you can actually rewrite this expression that is just a constant, that is a constant, so that is your new K prime, uh, and then the rest you can take natural logs and you have exactly the same representation, right? So uh, uh, plotting now the logging of the rate, of these four rates, versus the concentration of substrate, which is exactly the same as you had before. The rates will change, but the concentration of sub substrate will not. You're going to have another fit. Okay, and that fit, uh, again, you can do with Excel, is uh, going to give you an equation which is going to be slightly different. Okay, so uh, the equation for that fit, as I tell you in the statement of problem 6.3, is 4.03 plus 1.06x. Okay? Right, so much as we have what we had before, it turns out that the slope gives you m. Okay, that's m. We already had it. Okay, so this number is very close to 1, that number is very close to 1. These experiments have error. This number is essentially the same if you assume that there's about a 10% uh, error. Uh, the new data that we have uh, obtained is actually the logarithm of k prime. Okay, notice that these two numbers are different because k prime, which is this value, is just a rate constant, which is a single value, times the concentration of enzyme to the power of n. n is a constant and k is a constant. But the difference between these two numbers is that the concentration of enzyme has changed from 134 to 3. That's why those two numbers are different. Okay? Uh, we're going to do a third set of experiments and then we'll figure out a way to take this logarithm of k prime and be able to t uh, 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 figure out what k and n is. Okay, so the third set of experiments is you change uh, once more the concentration of enzyme to all the way to 10 uh, millimolar, okay, and then you measure four new rates. All right, and you repeat uh, uh, the fit. Okay, so the idea here is that, well, you're going to be able to go through here and then just plot the logarithm of these rates that you're obtaining versus the concentration, the logarithm of the concentration of substrate, which is the logarithm of these numbers, and then you will get a new fit. Okay, one, two, three, four. And you can fit that, and the equation of this fit, which is provided to you in uh, the statement of example 6.3, happens to be 4.56 plus 1.08x. Okay, much as what you had before, okay, this corresponds to the slope uh, uh, of that line. And according to this expression, that simply is the order with respect to s. So, so far we have not made any progress. We already knew this number. Okay, that number is the same as that one, is the same as that one. That's just the reaction order with respect to uh, uh, substrate. Okay, and again, notice that the numbers are slightly different, but that's because there's about a 10% error or so. But now we actually have a new value for the logarithm of k prime. And notice that this number is different from that and different from that because the three numbers have been obtained with experiments that use three different concentrations on the enzyme. Okay, so now with these three points, we're actually ready to try to calculate finally what this rate constant is and what this n is. Uh, notice that what we actually have, let me put this a little bit closer so that I can draw a, th a different graph, log them off in odd. We take this expression, which has uh, the rate constant being equal to k prime uh, concentration of a uh, sub zero to the n, and what we can do with this expression is take the log again. Okay, so if you take the log of this, this is going to be log of k. Sorry, k 
k prime is equal to k, yeah, so k prime is equal to log of k plus n times the log of the concentration of E naught. All right, and now what we actually have here is another the equation of another straight line where this can be uh, y, that is going to be a, that's going to be the slope, and this is going to be x. So if you're able to do a representation in which you plot the logarithm of k prime versus the logarithm of the concentration of n sigma times zero, okay, and you're able to do a fit of these uh, numbers, notice that you will be obtaining n from the slope and the logarithm of k from uh, the intercept. Okay, where are we getting this data from? Notice that this logarithm of k prime uh, is actually the numbers that we're obtaining in the slopes of this other graph. Okay, and the logarithm of the concentration of n sigma times zero is just the logarithm of these numbers that give you these three lines. Okay, so you're actually going to have three, three points, right? Uh, these three uh, values for logarithm of k prime and then uh, the logarithm of these three uh, concentrations. Okay, so that is going to give you a fit uh, or, or the equation of a line that should be a straight line. Okay, and the book tells you that when you do this, the equation of this line is equal to 6.56 plus uh, 0 0.998 x. Okay. Comparing the, uh, this equation to that one, we actually find that, well, uh, the slope of this line is going to be n, okay, so that is n, and then the intercept with the y-axis, which is this number right here, that is going to be the logarithm of k. Okay, so from here we actually have solved uh, the entire problem. Okay, uh, notice that uh, when we started the idea here was to obtain what the order is with respect to substrate, what the order is with respect to enzyme, and what the rate constant is. The order with respect to the substrate is provided by any one of these fits, and those, that number happens to be one. Okay? Uh, the order with respect to enzyme, we actually have to work a little harder, but we actually find out uh, that that number is also one. And then the last thing that we actually have to do is calculate what the rate constant is. From this value, this intercept, we also only get the logarithm of the rate constant but we can just make the rate constant or calculate the rate constant as 10 to the power of that 6.56. Okay? And that number happens to be 3.63, 10, uh, 10 to the 6. All right, uh, we still need units in this rate constant, uh, but the units of the rate constant depend on the order. It turns out that we have found out that n is equal to 1, m is also equal to 1. So the reaction is first order with respect to enzyme, first order with respect to substrate. That means that it's second order overall. Because the rate uh, is always uh, in molar per second, concentration per unit time, that means that the rate constant has to be in molar to the minus one, second to the minus one. Okay, so that is the solution to this problem.